In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how you can create your own customizable arrow generator just like this one over here. The aim is to create an arrow that points between any two objects that you can select using a customizable setup right over here. And apart from that, you have control over things like the thickness of the arrow, the length of the arrow heads, the thickness of the arrow head, as well as the resolution of the arrow head, and whether or not you want it to be shaded smooth or flat, and whether you want it to be pointed in both directions or only one direction. Apart from that, you can also select the material for the arrow heads and the material of the actual body of the arrow separately. Now we're going to learn how we can step by step create this particular arrow generator. And we may not focus too much on how to set up the customizability of it. Although you can check out various other tutorials of mine to learn that aspect. And apart from that, in today's tutorial, we might not go too deep into how to create this curved arrow generator, which requires a little bit more math. But essentially, the setup allows you to not only have it point in a straight line between two objects, but allows you to have it curved and go into whatever direction that the object wants it to be. And it also inherits the properties of the object, such as the scaling, so that you can have some sort of a proportional motion between it. So if you actually want to just download this particular curved arrow generator along with the straight arrow generator, you can get that on my Patreon as a single product, or you can join my monthly tiers where we will be uploading so many of these generators or various other project files, which I'm not currently getting time to post tutorials on YouTube for. However, I will be posting so many more tutorials on YouTube and there's quite a bit to get into about that, but we'll do that really soon. So until then, Let's go ahead and learn how we can create this double headed arrow using Blender's geometry nodes. So first thing in a new file, we're going to go ahead, bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window. And we're going to switch this to the geometry node editor. Then we're going to press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. After which we're going to press control right click to remove this connection. Of course, you might need the node wrangler enabled to be able to do that. If you don't have node wrangler enabled, you can just click and drag that off to remove the connection. Now we're going to keep the group input, but the first thing that we want is the two objects between which we're going to be drawing the arrows. So in order to add in more objects without removing our geometry node editor, we're just going to press this little pin icon to keep this pinned to the screen. Now we'll press shift A and search for empty and we'll choose plane axis. And we're just going to press G Y and then press shift D Y to create another one. Now that we have these two empties down in our geometry node editor, we can press shift A and search for an object info node. And then we can select our empty and then press shift D to create a duplicate and choose our other empty as well. Now that we have both the empties, we can get their location by choosing this to relative. And now we have the relative location of both of these empties. Now what we want is a line that goes from one empty to the other. And that's really easy. We can just press shift A, search for a curve line. And then for the start, we can go ahead and choose the location of this. And for the end, we can choose this location. Now, if we plug this into the group output, we should have a line that goes between these two empties and you can move the empties around and the line will follow. That's absolutely great. Now, the next thing that we want is the little arrowheads that's going to go on these two ends of the line. So let's just move this to the side, press shift A, search for a joint geometry so that we can have both the line and the arrows. And what we want is to have the arrows instanced on the ends of these curves. Remember, this curve line currently consists of only two points, which is the start and the end. So if we just instance on that, we should be good enough. So let's press shift A, search for an instance on points node, and then simply plug this value in as the points. For the instances, I'm going to press shift A and search for a cone, and I'm going to plug that in right to the instance. Now we can take this output and plug that into the joint geometry, and we should be able to see two cones at the ends. However, the cones are clearly not oriented in the correct direction. Now to do that, we are going to use a little bit of vector math. And if you don't know anything about the vector math node, you can go ahead and check this video, which will give you a comprehensive understanding of vectors and how the vector math node works. So the first thing that we want is the direction in which this should be pointed. So we're going to press shift A, search for a vector math node, and we're going to change this from add to subtract. Now, if we simply take this location and plug this in over here, we should get a vector that goes from one to the other, which means it's going to point in the correct direction that this has to point. However, this is currently a vector, but we don't want it to be a vector. We need to 
change the rotation of this. So to change the vector to a rotation, we press Shift A and search for an align Euler to or align rotation to vector node. So now we're going to align the rotation to this particular vector. Let's plug this rotation in. And now you see this perfectly goes in that direction. However, that also rotates this one in that direction. I don't really require this to be rotated in that direction. So what I'm going to do is instead of rotating it using this instance on points node itself, I'm going to press Shift A and search for a rotate instances node. Plug that in right over here and choose this rotation over here. And for the selection, I'm just going to select only the index that corresponds to this. Now the index is going to be either 0 or 1. So let's press Shift A, search for an index node and then search for a compare node. So press Shift A, search for compare. And now I simply want to check for these integers. If the index is zero, only then should it be rotated. Now clearly that rotated the wrong one. So I'm going to change this to index one and it shouldn't be greater than, but it should be equal to. So if it is equal to zero, then this is working. And if it's equal to one, then this one's rotated. So since I want this one to be rotated, I'm going to keep it at equal to zero. And now it's rotated. Now I need to get the exact opposite direction for this arrow. So to get the opposite rotation, you can take this and you can either multiply it by minus one, or you can just take subtract and switch the order. So what I'm going to do is just press shift D to duplicate it, change this to scale and I'm going to scale it by a value of minus one which is going to flip the vector plug this vector in right over there take the same align rotation to vector plug this vector in right over here and then duplicate this rotate instances node plug that in plug this into the rotation and now what I'm going to do is just duplicate this equal to plug that in right over here and check if the index is one then that result is going to go into the selection so now if you see we have if the index is zero it's going to rotate by the difference between this location and that location. So it goes in that direction. However, if the index is a value of one, which means it's this one over here, then it's going to rotate by the negative of that, which means it goes in the opposite direction. And that's why it rotates in that direction. So now we actually have the rotation. Now I'm going to touch upon exactly how you can make this super customizable. So to make it super customizable, all we do is we take these and we plug them in as input sockets to this group input. Now, if you want to make changes, you have to use the side panel. If it's not available, you tap the letter N on your keyboard to bring it up. You ensure that you're on this group panel and you can see that in the group sockets with this selected, you get these options. Now this says vertices, we can make that arrow resolution. So you can name this whatever you want. And now if you see in our geometry node input over here, you actually have this resolution and you can change that to be whatever you want. So similarly, we need this depth to carry to decide the length of the arrow so we can just plug that in and now you can see it just increases or decreases the length appropriately so we can call this as arrow length so again in the group sockets go down call this arrow length and so on and so forth similarly for this object instead of doing this you can actually plug that in to two more group inputs just like that and like that. And that way now you get objects that you can rename and you can reorder over here as well. And the order will change over here as well. So those are different things that you can do. I think the rest of it, based off of what you require to be customized, you can make by yourself. However, we're going to go ahead and start figuring out how to make this more and overcome a lot of the problems that we're going to be having. So the first problem that I was having is right now we have this really good arrow generated. However, it's obviously going to have this arrow length pointed after the actual object, but I want it to point perfectly to the object. So in order to fix that, the first thing that we did is we actually pushed it back. So how could we push it back? So that's actually really simple. What we did is we pressed shift A and we decided whatever length it is, it's going to be scaled in the opposite direction. So let's search for a math node. Let's take this arrow length and let's multiply it by a value of minus one. So ensure you change this from add to multiply. And now it's being multiplied by a value of minus one. Then all we do is we set the position back by that amount. So how do we do that? We press shift A, we press set position. We plug that in over here and we want this to move on its local Z axis. So let's press shift A, search for a combine X, Y, Z node and just take this and plug that into the Z and now offset it by that amount. So now you see it gets offset and it's always going to be pointed perfectly at the arrows. Even if you were to increase the length from our dropdown, it's always going to be pointing perfectly at our empties or whatever objects we have selected. 
The next thing that we need is to actually create the body of the arrow. So that's going to be fairly simple initially. And that is, we already have a curve line that goes from this arrow to that arrow. If we just press Shift A and search for a curve to mesh, we can plug that in right over here. And for the profile curve, we can press Shift A and search for a curve circle. Now, if we plug this in right over there, you see we do get a curved circle. We can play around with the radius and that looks like we have the arrow. However, that causes a problem, which is this over here. That's something that I obviously did not want because we want it to be a perfect pinpoint. So how could we potentially fix this and get this to get pushed back to the faces of these two arrowheads? And that took me quite a lot of time to find out. So luckily I did figure out a way of doing it. The first thing that we wanted to do is actually find out the positions of this particular face and this particular face. So the way I did that is I pressed Shift A and searched for a mesh to points node. Now what that does is it converts every single vertex into a point. However, I don't want it to be for the vertices, but I wanted it to be for the faces and not just the faces on the side, but I wanted it to be only for the face at the bottom. And we actually have that present right over here using this particular bottom selection for the cone. So let's go ahead and plug that into the selection. So now we ideally should have a point present right there. To help view this, I'm just going to go ahead and mute this for now. So now you see we have that point present right over there. And remember, we also want these to actually be present. So let's just plug that in over there. So there, now we have a point present at this particular face. Next, I want to realize these two points so that we have the actual position of those two points. So let's press Shift A, search for Realize Instances and plug that in right over there. So now each point is its own point. Next, we want to sample the position of these points. So we press Shift A and search for a sample index node. Plug that in right over here. And what do we want to sample? We want to sample a position, which is a vector. So then we press Shift A and search for the position. And then we plug that in over here. Now this is going to give me the position at index zero for these instances, which are two little points over there, or at least the realized instances. So the point here and the point over there. Now what I want to do is I want to take this particular curve line and push it back by that same distance. So the same way how we set position for these over here and we checked for the index being equal to zero or one, I'm going to do the exact same thing and push it back. So I'm going to select those nodes, press shift D to duplicate. And then I'm going to take this set position, press shift D to duplicate it. And now I have the index, the indices, if they're equal to one or zero and the set positions. So if the index is, let's say equal to one, let's plug that in over here. Let's take this, let's actually take this, plug this in first, and then just plug this in over there. Then I want to take this position and plug that in as the position. So that clearly pushed it all the way over there. So that was the wrong thing. So I'll go ahead and select position zero. So now what's actually happening is this particular point, which was index zero, is getting pushed back to this position over here and is no longer present over there. Now we are going to do the exact same thing once again. And we can actually see that by now unmuting this. As you can see, this has been pushed back to be present right over there. Now we can take this, press Shift D, duplicate that again, and then simply do the same thing. So we're going to sample the index, but this time it's not going to be index zero. It's going to be index one. And we're going to sample the position. And that position is going to be set in as the position, but only for an index of one over here. So once that goes in, we get these pushed back as well. So we now have an arrow that's generated between the points. And it's actually that simple. There's not much more to it. You can always go ahead and press Shift A and search for set material. And then you can choose two different materials to go into these two sockets. And you can set this up however you like. The best part about this is you can always just press Shift D. So now I have a second one. And now I can just press Shift D, move this here. And for this one, instead of using MT001, I can go ahead and choose let's say MT002, and now I have two arrows going out from the same position. So you can use this to create your own arrows. You can do so much with it. But the idea is that, yeah, every problem is solvable using geometry nodes if done correctly. I really do want to create a tutorial on how to create the curved arrow generator as well. And I will definitely do that. However, I will require a little bit of time before I can do that. If you cannot wait, the file is present on Patreon. You can buy it as a single purchase, 
or you can join the monthly tiers where I will be creating many more simple loops and I will be uploading those as well continuously on Patreon as exclusive content. I will be making tutorials for a few simple loops as well in the coming few days. But until then, I really hope this helped you. This is a sneak peek at the next video that's coming up in a few days. I hope that excites you. On Patreon, I've also recently created a splash generator. I might be creating a tutorial on that real soon, maybe the 2D version and not the 3D version. But let's see how this goes on. This was the first time I actually recorded in 4K. Do let me know if that was visible. If the notes are too small to see, then I will continue recording in HD. I just have access to a recording studio for the next few days. So I really want to make the most use of it. And it has a 4K monitor and a very good mic. So I'm making use of it. This is going to be the quality for the next few tutorials only. And then I'll be going back to my own laptop when I lose access to this studio. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped. Let me know if the 4K worked and if you want the tutorial for the curved arrow generator, if it's something that's useful, what other types of generators would you actually want? Because I want to create more generators and be focused on making products that help people rather than just creating animation loops that most people aren't really watching at all. So if these are helping you, let me know. I have a lot of targets that I have to hit by September. So you can expect more regular tutorials real soon. But until then, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And until next time, keep creating.